everyone called him Feathers. It wasn't his real name, and he didn't actually have any feathers, but the name stuck. Feathers was a big, silly, puffy husky. He got the name because when he began shedding in the summer, his tufty fur looked like a bird molting. And when he shed in the winter, and indeed the spring and autumn, it looked much the same. And so it was a nickname that was adopted by everybody. His humans, his pack members, the numerous smart alecky cats, unwanted telemarketing calls. Hello, Feathers. I'm calling to make sure that I have your vote in the upcoming election of Rice versus Wheat. Please make sure you vote for Rice. But Feathers felt that he would be much better represented by a name with more regal connotations, one that respected his long and impressive lineage. He tried to articulate his opinion, but everything he said just came out sounding like BOO, a word no human understood. One night, he was watching a television program when something piqued his interest. Normally, he paid little attention to such things, unlike his girlfriend Mary, who was an avid TV viewer, who sat curled on the sofa with her girlfriend Marta, a very confused cat. Feathers found the entire situation confusing, but on this particular night, none of that mattered, for the glowing screen was showing something new and exciting. A group of dogs who looked very much like himself were charging through the snow somewhere, dragging behind them a lone human who couldn't be bothered to run on his own. He didn't know how he recognized the dogs, as he spent little time in front of a mirror, and he didn't know what it would feel like to run through the snow, for Feathers had grown up in the southern United States, where such things were rare. As he watched, he remembered an earlier night, when Mary had become fascinated by a group of unusual-looking dogs who were apparently singing to the moon. For reasons he couldn't have said, but felt in his bones, Feathers had known this was important. Mary tried and failed to tempt the strange dogs out of the TV by offering up her favorite toy as a bribe, but Feathers had been far more interested in the song. What were they doing? Were they asking the moon a question? The moon certainly didn't seem to be saying anything helpful. Perhaps they were making a wish. He tried to introduce this ritual into his own pack. But the results had been less than harmonious, and the moon hadn't batted an eye anyway. The humans had pizza that night, and when they were done, they set the plate on the floor for the dogs to clean. Feathers in particular loved bread, and gulped down every piece of uneaten crust. As he dozed on the plate, he noticed the moon was out that night, the big moon that looked like his recently polished plate, and not the weird moon that looked like it was trying to hide behind part of the sky. Eventually, the humans turned off the lights, the cat slunk off to do whatever cats did at night, and Feathers drifted off to sleep. He was awakened in the middle of the night by a loud noise somewhere outside, and he ducked out the dog door to see what was up. His eyes widened at what he'd stumbled onto. He'd caught the moon in the act of trying to dig a hole in the ground and hide. So that's where it was all those times you didn't see it, he thought. But even more importantly, its light revealed that a tree had seemingly fainted and made a brand new gate in the fence. He'd often wondered what lay in the world beyond, and without a second thought, for he was a husky after all, he ran for it. It felt good to stretch his legs. He'd always known that he was made for running, and so he ran further and faster than had ever done before. After a while, he started to wonder if he should turn back before he got lost, but the ground hadn't run out yet, and he just had to see how far it went. From somewhere just up ahead, there was a glow. Just that far, he told himself, and then he'd head home. But when he finally got there, he gasped with disbelief. Holy crap, said Feathers. I'm on the moon! How long had he been running? He couldn't seem to remember. But looking back the way he'd come, he was shocked to see a little blue-green ball in the sky. That must be where he'd come from, but it was no longer touching the moon. He was stuck there. There had to be a way to get back. Maybe he should try asking for directions, but there didn't seem to be anyone around. But obviously, someone had been here. He was just about to try following the trail when he heard a voice from somewhere close by. Hey, what are you doing here? He looked up to see Jane and Zoe, two of his cat pals who were giving him funny looks. Hey guys, he said excitedly, what are you doing here? We're hanging out just like every night. This is where cats go when they go out partying. Why do you think dogs always bark at the moon? They know we're up here, and they can't reach us. It makes them go nuts. Speaking of which, how did you get here? I don't know. The fence was open, and I started running. And I just kept running till I was here. 
That's silly, said Zoe. You can't run to the moon. Well, how did you get here, Feathers asked. I got here by licking the magic toad in the backyard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, magic toad. You betcha. <laughs> I love the magic toad. Magic toad. I just ate a whole bunch of catnip. Feathers was puzzled. I've never heard of the magic toad. That's because there's no such thing. It was Oliver, one of the older cats who'd just arrived. And you didn't hear about it from us. No toads. No, no, magic no. Toad. never heard of it. Never heard of the toad. Say no about toads. So why do you come here? Feathers asked the now rather large gang of cats that had gathered around. Well, we heard that the moon was made of cheese, so you can just imagine the mousing. But that hasn't been the case for a while. I always thought the moon was a giant snowball. Well, of course you do. You're a dog. Dogs like silly things. I wish it really was made of snow, Feathers said, and the cats gasped. No, you didn't! Didn't what? You can't make a wish on the moon on the moon. Why not? asked Feathers, who'd wondered why all the cats seemed so thoroughly put out. But even as he said it, he felt a breeze and looked into the sky. The stars had never seemed so brilliant before. Indeed, he'd hardly noticed them. Now there seemed to be thousands of them, and as he watched, they seemed to be getting closer and closer still until they were drifting down all around him. Feathers couldn't believe it. It was snow, fluttering down and blanketing the ground. And somewhere deep inside, for a long moment, he felt the deep, ancient voices of his forebears calling to him from out of the darkness. Not quite a memory, but more than a reverie, imagining running wild across vast fields of snow with his pack from so long ago that it seemed as old as the stars, and he was awestruck and humbled. The cat sat shivering and grumbling with great annoyance. Oh. We have to get this dog back to his home again. He's like totally ruining the moon. What a waste of a wish, said Oliver. Only a dog would ask for it to be cold instead of warm and toasty like laps and sunbeams and computer keyboards and other things humans use for all sorts of stupid things other than sleeping on. I'm sorry, said Feathers. I always wanted to see snow, but I really do need to get back home. The moon is nice and all, but there's no pillows up here. Or bread. Oliver sat and thought for a moment. I'm afraid there's only one person, and by person, I of course mean cat, one cat who can help you. The Queen of the Moon. There was some discussion and debate over whether or not this was a good idea, and if a dog ought to be granted an audience with Her Majesty, but eventually they all agreed that the dog was totally harshing their happening and needed to go home, and so he was led to the Grand Palace of the Moon Queen. Feathers was amazed at how cats, with no thumbs or construction skills to speak of, had built such a thing. But before he could ask, he was confronted by a fantastical apparition. I am Cat. I am she who conquered the windowsill, and who slew the great velvet sofa cushion of lore. I am she who napped through a tornado and never flinched once. For what cause do you come before me? Marta, is that you? I take it you recognized my list of accolades. You're a queen of the moon? I'm insulted that you didn't just assume that from the start. But for the moment, we have more important issues than acknowledging my grandeur. You have made a wish upon the moon and must be sent back home for that wish to be canceled. If I could wish for snow, couldn't I just wish to be home again? Each traveler is only granted one wish. Why? I don't make the rules. But you're the queen. I make some of the rules. Who makes the other rules? I don't know. How can you not know that if you're the queen? I don't know that either. You're not making sense. It makes perfect sense. As long as you already accept that it's true. It's like, like church. What's important is that your wish be broken. So the next time someone comes here, and it's better be a cat. You know, talking about the toad to strangers. They make reasonable wishes, like for cardboard boxes for everyone. Or a giant smartphone to sleep on. What do I have to do? First, you must don the sacred headdress of the supplicant. And a plaid blanket was draped across Feather's head while the cat sit around and tittered for a while. After a few minutes, Feathers began to wonder what was up. 
How is this helping me to get back? It's not. It's just for our own amusement. <laughs> See, most of us cats don't really have a problem with dogs. We just can't resist the chance to mess with you. Now, if everyone will concentrate on our dog friend and draw up your secret cat powers. You're making this up, aren't you? Feathers asked. But suddenly, all of the cat's eyes began to glow. Wow, he said. I thought cat's eyes only glowed because of flash photography, even though he had no idea what flash photography was and confused himself by just saying it. Oh, no, the moon queen said. That's just what we let the humans believe. Oh, if they only knew. Now just concentrate on where you want to be. You will feel yourself getting sleepy, and when you wake up, you'll be back home again. Feathers did as he was told, and slowly the moon palace began to melt away and he sank into a deep sleep which lasted the rest of the night. And wasn't even disturbed when one of his humans retrieved the plate. Sam! Sam! Wake up! Faintly, he heard a familiar voice calling his name, his real name this time. Sam! Look outside! Because this was too important to let silly nicknames get in the way. The world outside had turned white. Everything as far as his eyes could see was covered with a glistening, lustrous blanket of glorious winter snow. Which was weird, considering it was April. He and his packmates ran outside to see this exciting new development, and he marveled that his April Fool's Day wish had come true. But the timing made no difference to Sam. That was Feather's real name, of course. He was Sam, the perfect husky. And Sam loved the snow. His cat friends watched from the window, and while he was otherwise occupied, they swiped liberally from his food bowl. But, you know, in an affectionate sort of way.